is gonna be a fun day. Apart from the Sesto Elemento, my favorite modern day Lamborghini is the Aventador SV Roadster, which we are testing right now. Let's start off with some absolutely crazy numbers because this car is all about extreme. Base price, $530,000. 530,000, that's a half a million. This car is the most expensive SV ever produced, $720,000 as it sits right now. That's enough money to buy a Rolls Royce Wraith, a Huracan Spider, and have a driver and a chef. But I'm assuming that the people who have one of these probably already have those anyways, so it doesn't really matter. They made just 500 SV Roadsters, and along with that exclusivity comes some special add-ons. More power, 741 horsepower out of the naturally aspirated 6.5 liter V12. That is among the most powerful naturally aspirated V12s ever. Torque stays at 507, the same as the stock car, but that's okay because this car is plenty powerful. It saves 110 pounds over the normal Aventador Roadster. A lot of that is due to carbon fiber bits in the interior, reduced sound deadening. It's extremely loud in here. You've got a stationary carbon fiber wing instead of active aero, and you've got stationary aero on the C pillars instead of active as well. But you've also got some things that are very incredible. A production first, according to Lamborghini, is pushrod magnetic suspension. That allows this car to adapt to different driving environments extremely well, limit body roll, and lap the Nürburgring in under seven minutes. Six minutes and 59 seconds was a giant middle finger to Ferrari and everybody who claimed that Lamborghinis couldn't go around turns. In fact, that puts it in the same league as the Porsche 918, the P1, and the LaFerrari. And since Ferrari and McLaren don't feel like releasing their times, we're gonna just pretend that the SV is faster. There are some problems with it. We'll get those out of the way quickly. The car weighs 4,000 pounds, even after that 110 pound weight savings. That is crazy considering a 675 LT Spider weighs 3,000 pounds. A thousand pound difference is a lot. And even though this car makes a lot more horsepower, 740 instead of 666, it does not make up for that thousand pound difference. Another thing, it has the single clutch ISR gearbox from the normal Aventador. At the time when the Aventador was released, they did it for weight savings and the fact that the ISR gearbox was able to shift just as fast as double clutch transmissions. But with the new generation transmission in the Lamborghini Huracan and all of its competitors, it just simply isn't up to par. It's extremely clunky around town. When you shift at half throttle, it sways you back and forth, similar to the SMG transmissions in something like an E60 M5. And when you're paying, in this case, $720,000, you want cutting edge technology, and that just isn't it. But enough of that, that really doesn't matter because we have 741 horsepower, 355 millimeter rear tires, and a nice road to play with. <laughs> that makes this so astonishing is the level of grip that it has with that magnetic ride suspension and the ridiculously wide rear tires. I mean, the only tires wider than that are something like a Bugatti Veyron and that produces quite a bit more horsepower. But this thing can hit turns at way higher speeds than the Veyron. It feels very planted. In fact, the aerodynamic changes in this car give it 170% more downforce than the normal Aventador. That is a big improvement. One of my favorite parts about the car is the tachometer. It's styled after the tachometer that was in the Lamborghini Veneno. I remember when that came out, it was just absolutely out of this world. Nobody had seen anything like it. It's horizontally opposed and it's yellow. I mean, who has a yellow, all yellow tachometer? Yes, Porsche has some yellow small dials, but this is at a new level, a huge screen that's all yellow. It looks fantastic. And man, does it just absolutely look like a video game. 
It feels big. It absolutely does. After driving a Huracan a lot, there's no getting around the size of this thing. But you know what? With the size comes that incredible sounding V12 engine. There's really nothing like it. This might be my favorite sounding engine of all time. You also get the insane looks. Absolutely insane. I mean, when this thing drives down the road, the Aventador was already beautiful. Uh, beautiful is almost not even the right word. Intense, menacing, but also beautiful. But the SV took it up a notch. I mean, you've got the redesigned front fascia that looks absolutely ridiculous. You've got the beautiful new wheels. The rear diffuser is insane. The aero and the exhaust. You get the quad exhaust exposed instead of them being hidden underneath this one giant hex. Hexagon. And in the interior, it just feels more special than basically any other Lamborghini. I mean, we've got carbon fiber everywhere. The doors are completely carbon fiber, like something like the Superleggero or the previous SV. The seats are Alcantara. They have this gorgeous SV logo on it and the kind of tricolore triangle logo on the seats as well. We've got no floor mats, although this has a one-off floor mat uh, to match the exterior of the car. Now, with all this ad personam stuff, you can get almost whatever you want, including a cup holder that costed $800 behind me. Things you lose. We don't have a glove box. We don't have any storage compartments whatsoever. Seriously, none at all. So I've got my helmet camera mounted just to the side of me, uh, to the side of the seat. That's pretty much all you get. But this is a heavy duty, heavy hitter in the performance world. It's an all-out track beast, and so you don't really care that you lose some of those amenities. <laughs> this car is fast. Listen to that engine, oh my god. This road's a little tighter than the Aventador likes, but that's all right, because this is a blessing just to be able to touch this thing, let alone be in it, driving it. It sounded kind of sexual. The one thing about the transmission is because it's so jerky when it snaps between shifts, if you're shifting in a scenario where you're not perfectly straight, it does feel like it almost throws the weight balance of the car off a little bit. So it's a little bit more nerve wracking changing gears in this than your normal double clutch cars. You've got carbon ceramic brakes that stop incredibly well. Oh. This is awesome. Things I love about it, the sound, the looks, uh, everything, the interior, the tachometer, it is absolutely incredible. I wish I could take the top down, but it's a little bit cold. These are 15 pounds each of carbon fiber. I like that they did uh, the hard top removable uh, carbon fiber instead of going to the soft top, which looks uglier and adds unnecessary weight. <sighs> I hope you enjoyed this review as much as I enjoyed driving it. This is, oh my God, one of the coolest cars I've ever driven in my entire life, if not the coolest car ever. Make sure to follow GC Seed on Instagram. This is his car. Thank you so much, man, for letting me drive this. Oh, please browse our channel and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you next video.